from Jamaica is my dad's on it. Um, my mum was born here, but um, from a Jamaican household too. And she speaks Patois at home. So growing up, me and my brother would hear Patois from my mum, my dad, my grandma, my aunties, granddad, everyone. Everyone spoke Patois at home. Um, yeah, we weren't necessarily encouraged to follow suits, but we were certainly around. It was, it was, it, we were cocooned in it, basically. It was a part of who we are, our culture. Um, at home, that is. Um, we weren't. It wasn't, we were no way encouraged to speak it at school. There was a definite line, right? <laughs> Patwa is for your home, for your people. And when you're, when you're at school, um, you speak proper, proper English. Um, <laughs> that's what you have to do. But yeah, we weren't, we weren't really encouraged to speak it, um, which we can go on into later on, during the conversation. And then when I was, uh, I suppose... In 2007, when I moved to Jamaica when I was 24, um, I was t totally saturated with the language. Um, and that's when it became, I suppose that's when it became my own, where I had to, had to use it to get by. Uh, yeah, I'll stop there for now. Honey, do you want to say something? Yeah, I do. Um, okay, so... I'm Honey Williams. I am a multi-dimensional, multidisciplinary artist. I do, um, I'm well. I'm a, I'm a singer. I'm about to do that right now. Like after, well, after this conversation, not right in a second. And um, I'm also a choir director, a baby DJ, and a visual artist as well. I paint and I illustrate. And uh, how does Patwa relate to me? Well, my whole, whole family is Jamaican. My mum and dad are Jamaican. <clears throat> my dad, uh, he's no longer with us, but he was a very middle class Jamaican, I would say. He was a detective in Jamaica and um, moved to America, then moved to England. Uh, he was very old when he had me. Um, and my mum was kind of middle class as well, uh, very churchy, very, very churchy. And <laughs> I would hear Jamaican Patois all the time in, the, in my household and at church and at school as well. I went to Janogli, um City Technology College, as it was called then. And yeah, people would copy the way that Jamaicans speak all the time and try and like trying to be black as it were um yeah i don't know what else you want to know <laughs> that's a good start that's a good that's a yeah great start super fascinating i, I want to know more for sure how about you cedar how okay so you? yeah for me um so uh yeah i'm uh english jamaican um my mum's side of the family's jamaican i'm different to both of you and we'll probably get into this but I was not encouraged to speak Patois at home we never really spoke never spoke Patois at home um my my gran has got a very um a Jamaican very... accent but didn't ever speak in in Patois and um if Patois was ever if if I ever used Patois uh when I was a kid I was just really discouraged from using it and mm. it was very like you know my aunt would particularly me like cedar like was you know cedar was the one that had to really speak properly and mm. it was like i was the one that doesn't definitely Sorry. not my <laughs> aunts or whatever would tell everyone was like on me <laughs> like, yeah you know, i was like you know so um so that's and, that, and so that in a way that was partly what started my um uh, exploration of patois in the in um, the lockdown uh in 2020 at a certain point when we went into the first lockdown i mean you know, we'll, we'll get into it as well i mean I've, I've always been interested in patois and i've been mm. i think i was I, you know i work as a, a visual artist and curator and writer and um i suppose one of the things that started this off was i was creating an exhibition at the museum of london called dub london and doing the research into that and i was doing a lot of research into mm. sound system culture and rastafari right. culture and, and and jamaica generally and i was and i was interviewing a lot of kind of elders from the jamaican community in london and particularly um 
record shop owners and um, people like that. And so I was just learning a lot about folklore and 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 um, in relation to the music and the history of the music. Uh, history of the music. Uh, Ooh, that's funny, the funny, funny echo. We look like come again. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> We'll get there, but 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 so I that, so I'd had that um, the research I was doing, and then and then the uh, yeah lockdown happened, and some I don't know for some reason it just struck me I'd really like to do Patois lessons, but actually it was really hard to find a teacher, so it was yeah. through 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 an academic friend of mine um, hooked me up with the poet uh, Joan Hutchinson in Jamaica, so I had to actually do the lessons with a Jamaican. In, and I couldn't find like none of my family could do. It. I couldn't find anyone to do this. It was it was quite complicated to find someone. Wow. But I found I found Joan, this this <laughs> Sorry, performance like, poet. Wow. I know you guys are blown away by this, <laughs> right? Any Yeah, I know. We, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was it was difficult. It was difficult for me to find someone to actually teach me the the language, and that's so why I had to have these quite formal lessons with Joan, and it was very like school, you know. And I'm quite. How does that make you feel, though, Cedar? Like. Yeah. Well, it was good. It was um, it, yeah, it was strange. It, it, you know? <laughs> it was strange. I mean, I still, I'm still won't speak patois like publicly, most likely. So, really? it was strange. You know, it's very, it's very uh, um, dislocated. If you ask me how, it's like you yeah. feel a little bit dislocated from the culture. I would say. Yeah. If you ask me how it made me feel, it's like dis That was what I wanted to explore. But I'm, I'm kind of interested in that in my work generally, like this idea of dislocation and 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 seeing your own culture but maybe reflected back at you from other right other places or something like that so I yeah but I guess that's my introduction into it mm. oh I think that every black British or mixed race British person of African descent feels that location in to some degree dislocation mm. um I mean I say I'm Jamaican British but when I went to Jamaica, they called me Fluffy British. Yo, Fluffy British! Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like, yeah. Fluffy means fat. So, yeah, I'm fat. It's a good thing there. It's, like, sexy. It's horrific here, like, heavens no. But um, over there, it's, like, a sexy thing. Yeah, and yeah. then, but then I was you like... you mean fat and pretty? Oh, uh, what? Mm -hmm. But um, I, I didn't... I was like, how do you know that I'm British? Like, what... what Am I giving off that's British? By the way I you breathe, <laughs> by the way you walk, by the way you pick out your money, out your purse, yeah. by the way you sit on. They can yeah, see it. On. They can see it. Yeah. All right. So, so. so sorry. I was going to say the same because when I was um, 24, I just took up myself, tech with myself. I was having a bit of a moment in London when I was studying, a bit of a low point, and I just tech with myself. And I took myself to Jamaica um, for a three week holiday. And I ended up staying there for two and a half years. And, um, yeah, I they were always always very surprised that I could understand, one understand what they're saying and two chat back to them, like when I needed needed to. Not that I'm fluent, I want to, I don't know fluent in Jamaican, but I can get by. And, it, and they were like oh, shocked, like they they're thinking Jamaicans English are speaky spooky, you know. And I can be, <laughs> um, I can try, but um, wait, this, yeah, I definitely posh. Just in case. again, so again, I'm saying speaky spooky means posh for all those hours. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I would, I would definitely co-sign what Honey was saying. I mean, you're saying, Cedar, about the dislocation of it. Like, even though I feel very Jamaican and in my household and I just cook Jamaican food and music, there's always a sense of that dislocation there. Um, and that's with me having both parents Jamaican. Um, um, yeah, but we can we can dig down into that and come more. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting subject. I mean, yeah, just as well, just to go back as well. I think the with the family thing as well. Like, I think my grandmother is very, also very churchy, and, mm. and you know, I've only I've only ever been to Jamaica once, and the one time I did go, literally the first thing I had to do because my family's from um, Clarendon, so the first thing I had to do was literally go 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 to the go, go to the church. So I had to go to the like a very small little church and like, introduce myself to the village. Which part and one, of Clarendon? One, sorry, sorry. Which part of Clarendon? Oh, I can't remember the details. I have to. I have to um, check this. Yeah, it was a long time ago since I was there. But Crookedy sorry, Rocky Pine. Which part? Yeah, okay. uh, I have to check. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. So so that was the first thing we had to do was was go to the church. So the church, you know, the influence of the church is 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 huge. And yeah. um, yes, but it, that's that, that's something that people 
it's a very different it's not like it's not like english church <laughs> it's it's like it's a very very different <laughs> thing it's like god yeah. it's not yeah. like english church <laughs> no it's, it's not it's it's not this dry it's, it's not this dry cold place it's this kind of warm community center of the community like mm. the, it's like a village vibe right um it can uh, be, can I, be. I, well i i would say i was brought up in church from day dot I, I would say and it's a pentecostal church so it's very clap your hand gospel hallelujah yes man <laughs> talking tongues <laughs> feel the spirit that, mm-hmm. it's like that but um i don't know i don't it's it's Church is very respectability politics based. Yes. So, you know, if you're from an unwed mother, you're not seen as quite up on the hierarchy and they've got all these different things and lighter skinned people get more opportunity and so colorism comes in and it's always a guy, well, most of the time, that's a, the preacher and they get the highest spots in the church and... Mm got all the women that are supporting the whole thing and keeping it together mm. and um but yeah I learned to sing in church so I you know I can't be too hungry at for as well mm-hmm. <laughs> but I do think there is the whole class thing is a serious when we talk about language and identity of Jamaican identity the class thing has to come into the conversation because um I don't know if we're ready for that part of the conversation yet. let's go um but um so even in Jamaica, like what Connie was saying, is um, there's a very conservative Christian spine that runs through the island, right? And that's what the flesh has been put on. Like that comes from colonial. That's a colonial legacy thing. Yeah. Or not? Um, we'll talk the things then. Um, it, it was Christianity was brought to Jamaica with with um, the transatlantic slave trade, with the enslaved, kidnapped people from Africa. And so it, class and religion and identity are all in, entwined, like anywhere, like, like, it, like it would be. Um, but what you tend to find is with that, um, you know, people, even, even in England and even in Jamaica, people who, when you're a professional, when I was working in Jamaica, right, when I, when I had a job as a, a, a um, junior TV producer in Jamaica, and then I went on to work for a marketing company, one of the things what got me the job was because I speak English, right? It's my accent. Yes, I'm, I was qualified, I'd experienced it as a film, um, TV and film production, but it was the Englishness, right? Because it's the, it's this, still got this idea that foreign is better, right? Um, it comes, and it comes with class as well. Like, that's um, when they were, when, from when they found out, what we it? She chat your buddy. It was like, oh, I lost a few friends, right? And, so if you're speaking Patois in Jamaica, like the broad Patois, it's kind of the upper echelons kind of, it's, it's seen as a bit butto still. There's that connotation. It's still a quashy. Um, every... quashy. Oh, Go on, honey. I was going to say everything sort of pertains to, like with view to aiming to be in closer proximity to whiteness every, in every capacity of your life. Even though Jamaicans are really proud of themselves and, you know, they're survivors, you know, survived a lot. But um, everything is about being in closer proximity to whiteness. So your skin needs to be whiter, lighter. You'll you'll be more privileged. Yeah. um, Hair, hair texturism is a thing. If you've got thick Afro hair that doesn't move, you're you're seen as low down and everything, just every facet of your life. And it and it also applies to the way that you speak. So if you, um, you know, take me for instance, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of considered a little bit RP for here, like Nottingham, I, I would say. Um, I was, I'm from, I'm from St. Anne's, you get me? <laughs> I'm from Enns. So it's like, I'm kind of dislocated from that as well. But um, so um, Jamaican patter inth- infused where I'm from, I don't know, it's, I'm veering off topic. Am I veering no, off? No, no, it's all good. It's, it's, good. Relevant. it's relevant. It's relevant. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but bringing that back, though, um, about the class thing, and and I, it may maybe in a way, um, the idea of taking Patois seriously. So let let's maybe just right. 
roll it back and, and think about the history of the subject. And right. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to think about, you know, Miss Lou when I was doing the lessons. Miss Lou, Louise Bennett was one of the yeah. first people that was mentioned. And people mm -hmm. don't know who Miss Lou is. Um, she, sorry? Folklorist, absolute queen. But yeah, oh, yeah Miss Lou. In, in a way, she's kind of like the, the originator of, of kind of Jamaican um kind of reggae music in some senses you know or or, or, or so? well i think well she, she, I don't she, think so. maybe maybe that's a debatable issue but she maybe, brought, so, certainly the... certainly certainly let's say dub poetry you know i don't i think she she's the first person who really was a kind of archivist of the jamaican language and and collected the folklore and then and then took it seriously as a kind of art form in that way mm -hmm. um what, so there was obviously music yeah i'd say yes and no Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. I was, I was one of them. I mean, I can't deny she, um, yes, yeah, she was, she took pride in, in Jamaican culture and, uh, and one of those things, in, one of the facets of Jamaican culture is language, right, patwa. So she would, being an educated, light-skinned woman, um, performing and writing in patwa was like very, um, it was unheard of. She, she brought it to the forefront. She really bigged up Jamaican um, language and she, it was about pride, pride in the way we speak. Right, but mm. I think if we're talking about the history of Patois, I think we need to go back, 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 back to... Yeah. Okay, where do you want to go to? I want to go back to when... Um, do you want to go back to West Africa? Yeah, when uh, ancestors were kidnapped and brought there. They were brought from West Africa. And um, a lot of them are Ghanaian, were Ghanaian, are Ghanaian, from the Akan tribe, um, Congo, Nigeria, all parts of, of yeah, West Africa, yeah, yeah. and they intentionally Ashanti, Ashanti. Ashanti yeah. yeah, they intentionally jumbled us up so we couldn't communicate together, and uh, it would be harder for us to revolt. So there's little morsels of those languages still left. So like words like nyam, mm. so nyam food. I'm gonna nyam some food. That's like a West African word. But mm. I suppose that could be hidden quite easily like nyam, 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 nyam. it can yeah, be yeah. because we were banned from speaking any languages that, and if you did you would you'd be killed you'd be killed Tongue cut out tortured they were just like yeah and culture was not supposed to be like, continued yeah and the punishments the other torture ways of torture are just absolutely horrific it's actually where I don't know if anyone's aware of this, kind of layering off on something else, but um, it's actually where S and M comes from, slave and master, you know, um, and the blacking up of the skin, and um, this is what slave masters used to do, like black up their skin, and now we have black leather and chains and things, but that, but they're literally re did role play it back in back in the day, day like colonial times and they were doing that together you know sadomasochism basically but um <clears throat> what were you gonna say sorry but yeah um i was gonna say bringing it back to the language side of things is kind of um so yeah i, I think i see jerick and patua as as like, a, as like a um if you travel down the language far enough it's like a history it's an archive of the people that have traveled the shores of the islands uh, um, yeah. who, who, who live there and it's like dropping off parts of, of the languages and it's kind of like a patchwork blanket of various cultures that have, have lived there so mm. obviously it's, 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 it's English in there various African languages that, have, that have, um, we've held on to which I'm proud yeah, that Port Portuguese have. Spanish Portuguese yeah. Spanish French um, but it's very like African sounding, like the vowels, and it's, it's very like um, that sense of it. But also, I think, um, yeah, it's the Spanish, the English, the um, indigenous French, people. indigenous people, like words like hurricane come from um, Taino languages. Um, yeah. um, but also the in Indian people as well. Indian people, words like gang, ganja, these words mm -hmm. come from, um, I'm not 100% sure, I'm not like, historian people, don't come from me. But um, <laughs> these, these these words were introduced and have become a part of the fabric of Jamaica. Because Jamaica is a um, it's like lots of threads of people, 
predominantly African culture. Let's not get it twisted. Let's not get it twisted, mm -hmm. African culture. But, um, and then the, the Rastafarian movement people, um, I think added another layer of um, spiritual, spiritual, philosophical dimension to the language. Like for instance, the use of I and I and how it encompasses mm -hmm. See how they saw themselves as one and as connection. Um, so I always see the patois as something worth valuable, as something rich, as something um, we need to be proud of. We need to really hold on to and, and, and value our culture. Um, enough people want to come and take it up and, and call it for them. And mm. um, I want them to take it away. So then we want to bar and say, I feel it. But we need to really honour that language. It's, it's, it's a... For me, it's a mark of resistance, it's a mark of survival, and it's pure pride me out for it. Um, so people like Miss Lou, who was really, um, you know, educated woman, who really revered the language, I think, yes, she she did, um, no one can, no one can dis, um, dispute that, Miss Lou, but when he said beginning of the language, I think the beginning of the language is beginning of the people, right? I think, yeah, I guess what I mean is the beginning of the language in a kind of academic Right. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. It's kind of recording the folklore, not the, right. you know. Right. I mean, it, it, the other side of it as well, we maybe, I think we're going to talk about sound systems and, and the music, which yeah, you just absolutely. touched on as well. But I mean, I mean, there's a great quote, quote from, from uh, Jar Shaka and he, and he was talking about the drum rhythms and how mm. the drum rhythms were also something that was, that was carried by the, the, the enslaved people. Um, from Africa, the one thing they could, you know, there were things they could bring with them, and the, the drum rhythms was was something that that was just that they, that, you know, they could bring rhythm with them. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think sound system culture is an, is an, I mean, obviously we're jumping forward a no, lot in the, in the timelines, but I, I mean, but even well, actually, in in I'm actually interested in. Yeah, the I guess the, the the what you're talking about the religious aspects of of patois and 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 the language and how that does actually does cross over to the sound systems and um, actually you know even bringing it back to the churches I mean I think you know the experience for me of 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 going to the church in Jamaica and going to a sound system was pretty similar actually and there and yeah. and you know go, going to a church and, going to, and actually I and and um sound you know I, I, is church you know yeah I mean? that's that's what I, there is that there is that saying that sound system is is like church essentially right Amen. so i think i think there that you know that that spiritual side of rastafarianism and rastafari and then yeah the music and then the, the language they all go they go hand in hand so um Definitely. yeah and we brought it with us to the uk right. you know with like um drum and bass jungle uh before that the, the dub reggae even lovers rock mm -hmm. you know, well, yes, uh, is, yeah, yeah, this is, go on, sorry, go on, honey. No, I was, I was just going to say, the language, um, that's how it kind of spread with Rocksteady as well, even mm -hmm. before in the 60s. Mm -hmm. and, um, that's how the way well, we speak started to spread. Well, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, actually... Um, Through the speaker boxes and sounds. Uh, it's catching uh, yeah, it. I only I, actually there's a phrase where you mentioned I think it, I can't remember if you said it was your uncle or something like that was or, or your or your father that came over because there's this great phrase uh, barrel pickney that I you know there's this phrase barrel pickney about barrel pickney yeah you know this me call it send for pickney then the yeah send yeah so pickney pickney, pickney is child and a barrel pickney would be uh, someone so so yeah. the family in a kind of Windrush time or pre around about Windrush time when the families some of the, some of the families would come over and some would be left behind. And then, and then, if that the, the maybe the the younger child was say left behind, and then they mm -hmm. would send for them later, and they called them barrel pickney. So that's one of the phrases that I really like. But yeah, I guess this is this, there's this kind of migration story for sure that's linked to patois and the Jamaican language, the way it comes from the Caribbean, specifically for us in this conversation, yeah. Jamaica. And then, and then, I mean, there's obviously the pre 1950s story which is a huge story as well but if mm -hmm. we focus on the kind of you know from the 1950s onwards when people started to, to migrate over um yeah i think from from that point over that the yeah the the music comes over the the blues parties come over the shabines um mm -hmm. and it's all it's you know it's all kind of kind of politics of race and you know people having to do their own parties because they're not getting allowed into the pub and they're not yeah. getting their housing and so yeah. forth but Jamaican culture is 
gold, right? We, we're creators. We're innovative people. We, we're DIY people, make something out of nothing, and we and, it, and it's good. <laughs> it's fly. We kind of like we look trash and ready. We have style <laughs> in anything we bring to bring forth, right? We and people like it. <laughs> if people like it, but um, so yeah, when the Shabin, um, the, the blues part is, um, was a way for the community to to vibes up to just feel a sense of community that again sorry be themselves to, yeah to be themselves because yeah. the world was harsh outside right so in close the door put up the beer slime and just you know feel nice so yeah. um but obviously our, our, our culture is is dazzling and shining and very enriching and people want a piece of it so when they hear the music when they hear the bass line drop, when they hear, see how we trash and we look smart and clean and fresh, they want a piece of it. And this that's not necessarily a problem for it to people to be like celebrating, but it's when they don't understand where it's come from and take it for themselves and don't really honour the people who, who originated the culture. It's like, yeah. for instance, I went, I went to Italy and I spoke Italian, right? I, I respected it as a language. I wasn't going to say it was mine, but a lot of, a lot of the things with Jamaican culture with the language also and music whatever um comes with that is that maybe we don't value it ourselves as we should we don't look after it um we think something else is is better foreign is better and then other people see the value in it other people see the um the, the money in it as well the art in it and they take it up for themselves and and um not, not really realizing how how it was made the struggle that came with it sorry honey you were we're going to um, yeah it's called cultural appropriation isn't it there we go um, it's very oh god i mean it's all over tiktok it's it's very now but they've been doing that f- when i say they i mean just everybody that isn't jamaican or black um have been doing that for years and um <clears throat> i don't know i I, I don't know. I've, I've lost my train of thought. Sorry. Okay. No, it's good. It's but, I think yeah. It's go go on go on. I'll add in. So no, because we're sorry. My, my mind's going all over the place. But then through yeah. sound system culture, through sound system culture, and the Shabins, the parties. This is was the conveyor belt. This was what um, carried Jamaican culture to the masses of England and further afield in the world because mm. our music, through reggae music, through dub, through everything, people come to our parties, and. And hear the songs and sing along, and before you know it, the um, the language was becoming the language of a lot of the, the working class people. It's come to parties or people that's used to come. Um, yeah. Well, if you think it's about it in terms of in, if you think if you think about it in terms of popular culture, I think yeah. the song "My Boy My Boy Lollipop." Is yeah, one that. of the first my, 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 the song "My Boy Lollipop." I'd have, to, I'd have to check Google the, you know, the date that was released. But it's you know it's early, probably early '60s, and I mm-hmm. think that's one of the first kind of like blue beat reggae songs that is a big hit in the in in the UK. And, and even if you think of "My Boy Lollipop" now, I mean that is mm-hmm. like you say, it's almost RP. It's almost you know it's almost in pure regular English. It's not it's not in any. It doesn't really you know it doesn't to our contemporary ears feel um feel feel like very jamaican but i think for the time it was released it was probably you know a, a real radical um departure so and it, a dark-skinned jamaican woman on tv yeah. on, on top of the pops it's like oh my god i mean that's that would be um amazing to see now um it's also a great song as well right it's still 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 i think it's still a we great song vibes, man. It's still a great vibes. song my boy lollipop and that was i think that's that's one of the first reggae songs you know to really i think i'm not sure what it got to in the charts but so if you, and then i'm just trying to you know if you think about how these things you know if you think about cultural appropriation and how things um get into kind of mass audiences i'm also thinking in terms of um let's think of like notting hill carnival and also i know that um uh, there's a, there was a very early carnival in Nottingham as well from you know when I was looking into that as well so yeah. if you think about the you know the, you've got this, these generations the, the, the kind of windrush generations and doing the shabines and these parties and eventually they manifest into okay let's do a carnival let's do a city-wide event mm. you know what I mean celebrating mm. the culture celebrating the sound systems celebrating Scar or Rocksteady and then suddenly you've got a little 
car- mini carnival happening in you know mm. wh- whatever that whatever date that is 1975 1965 1970 so you, yeah. you know you, yeah, yeah. you start to so see that- how the culture spreads mm. well it's been a tradition from since you know we're in jamaica car- the whole carnival thing it was basically freedom freedom vomit you know mm-hmm. like oh my gosh i'm free now i'm gonna dress up as the master i'm gonna and make fun of them i'm gonna mm. I want to be a beast. You know, I want to be a bird. I want to like put lots of feathers on me. I want to be free like that. You know, Uh, like freedom orgasm, basically explosion of color. That's that's what carnival uh, is. Um, And then for the Notting Hill carnival, fast forward to that. That was about you know disenfranchised people in Notting Hill and people getting attacked by teddy boys and, and that whole thing came up. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know if you want to talk more about carnival culture, but I'd, I'd like to talk about um, jungle and stuff like trip hop and mm. um, like coming. Yeah, it's a okay. Yeah. Actually, I, there's a there's another phrase, screw face, right? Screw yeah. face, and I think I think jungle. I don't know who, but was was one of the, one of one of the first uh genres to really popularize the phrase screw face if you ever i think that you know there's probably songs and there's so there's so many um there's so many uh samples that were used in jungle uh tracks well, the, back in the day walk and live or or uh there, just, there just, were sampling songs that already existed now so. yeah they were sampling there were sampling songs that already existed they were sampling film they were sampling films they were sampling um rockers film or or um the heart oh. what, what's that Scarface. Yes, yeah, Scarface, but also the Jamaican films, because you know what are the two, the main Jamaican films, the harder they come, the yeah. harder they come, and Rockers. That you know, Rockers. there's so there's so many yeah. there's so many jungle tracks that sample those. So there again, there's that thing of these producers, you know, in the UK taking these little clips of of these Jamaican films and and turn them into like you say jungle tracks, uh, drum mm. and bass tracks in the in the 90s. But screw face, words like that. That's probably the first time that. Maybe the masses heard those mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. terms, but they're old. old they're school. old. Yeah. Um, yeah, jungle. That whole culture. I mean, it's it kind of came and went um, from black people. Anyway, it, it oh, kind of. Listen. Uh, listen no, let me finish what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it it was really well culturally appropriated. Like before, a jungle rave would be full of black people and um not many other people there really and then it kind of the black people left at one at some stage (laughs) and then it became really clinical and sort of acidy um but the whole the whole creation of jungle very i don't want to veer off topic too much came about because of not being allowed in acid house raves in the late 80s and stuff like that experiencing racism there even though you know it's about to be hacienda everybody comes there you know everyone's enjoying themselves but no it wasn't like that and the djs and stuff so they made their own movement and that's 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 what we keep doing people keep doing across the entire planet that's just marginalization then making new culture yeah, it's like the music, yeah, the music is e- each oppression with each new oppression we find or each new situation we find ourselves. We we create a new music to as a soundtrack to for us to cope first for us that reflects our our um, life at, at that time going through that struggle. So we 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 we're ever created. We're forever creating. Um, yeah, I think I, th- I think just to just to put another spin on it as well from the other perspective, I think. I remember I used to go to um, the Blue Note in Hoxton. They they used to do they used to do a club called Stealth in the early two thousands, and also Metalheads. So Metalheads, the Goldies Club, mm-hmm. was the was really the you know the most amazing kind of drum and bass uh, club in the in the early two thousands. And I think from the other side that it also you know there was the super positive side of it that it was this amazing experimental music, but it was also an amazing like melting pot. So you know obviously there was the kind of uh, you know black culture aspect to it but also it was a, it was also just like it was a you know 
I think anyone could could be there and it, and it wasn't an issue that was my that was kind of my take on it on clubs like okay. stealth and and metalheads um yeah it was I, I, think, it was, say, I think it was all I, I think it was kind of like yeah it was I think it was I think it was very positive for sure for me from, that's brilliant from my perspective it's like black women kind of got cancelled out of jungle first <laughs> and um it was left to sort of continue like that and then became progressively more and more white that's what i that's how it would be from my point of view and then garage came and uh that was kind of the end of um black people kind of being together and having something together like a a culture together on their own kind of thing and then it went now it's sort of I know there's Afro beats now, I guess. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, it's, it's interesting. The progress- I think. I think no. I get. I think. I get what you're saying. I think. I think from a kind of com- maybe from a commercial side, maybe from like a big record label side, they're the ones that that are really cynical. That say, oh no, you know, that we need a white woman to front this or some stupid shit like that. Whereas I think you know, like something like Metalheads was really. There was nothing like that there, but it's like when well, when it when it gets when it gets exploded and comes becomes commercial, then 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 you get that kind of blatant like racism essentially. Right. So so this is how. Um, <laughs> go on, go on. If, if, if we talk about the language, but this mm-hmm. this is what um, this was what carried the language to um, new audiences without black people being there to kind of um, what can I say. Yeah, if, if if you're so pe- people will hear hear the the lyrics and in the music and sing along and pick pick up words and phrases and then it it, it became a part of the um, British slang, right? It becomes part of British slang, and a lot of people didn't maybe weren't really aware of British slang actually derived from Jamaican patois, right? So they they're picking it up as yeah by um the music and 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 it becomes a part of British slang. To the point where on daytime TV now you've got Lorraine yeah. Kelly saying "big up someone" or yeah, you know, I'm say that to you, yeah. And it's become yeah. it's become um, Im- embedded in British culture. Do you reckon patois is a language of the underdog? It's a language of the resistors. Um, so first it will it will infiltrate like obviously it came from us, but for the music it will come from um, maybe working class people, and then it will filter its way through to other circles who maybe have no idea the words they're saying um have roots in jamaican patois jamaican culture and totally. the, the richness of jamaican history so that's why i get students i'm, I'm an english teacher part-time english teacher people saying well go on miss and um i'm going yam something at lunchtime i'm saying i'm like oh yeah no but yeah yam and they're like miss how do you understand that so, I'm telling me yeah, the yam. Let's say yam. Oh, yam. They take yeah. the end off. <laughs> so they, yeah, so it's been it's been like polished or like chiselled away, to, and it's become something else. The polish is the wrong word. Um, chiselled away, and it's become something that is is free now in the mouths of teenagers from Hucknall and Broxtow who maybe um, haven't got any Jamaican culture. So to the point where I've got students coming into my class. <laughs> and it's just a, this is maybe to say how. Uh, magnetizing Jamaican culture is, but I've got students coming into my class, chatting, saying Jamaican pattern words to me, and then saying to me, "How do you understand that, Miss?" And I'm like, "Oh, weird. Look, yeah, disconnect." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So then I have to educate them and say, "Well, this, this is," but they don't seem to get. They don't. No, it's not um, because it's, it's theirs now. Um, language, I mean, I, a, okay. Let me. I, I mean, I'm fully with you, and. Um, you know, I, I I feel your pain as well, but I think let, it's, let, let, it's a mixture of pain and a mixture of um like <laughs> uh, amazement. What I'm like, thinking of is is like okay, so I'm, I want to bring it to let, let's think of like food. I know I was going to think about food. So it's like it's like when you know, um, I'm, I'm I'm a member of like various like Jamaican food groups or whatever that I follow online and there's all there's always these kind of cultural appropriation conversations and you know the the the, the biggest criticism that can any, ever be thrown at anyone is basically like Jamie Oliver uh jerk yeah, rice I, <laughs> you know what I mean like like that is like that is just the lowest of the low behave. like you know <laughs> you know what I mean like but you know yeah. <laughs> like if you really want to criticize someone 
say, oh, it's looking a little bit like Jamie Oliver jerk rice but I mean you know what I, I think what can you I don't know what you can do about that you know you, you can't think, you, what, you know think, that, on, no one copyrighted jerk, no one copyrighted jerk rice you know <laughs> could have done. They could, uh, maybe they could have done <laughs> you know but <laughs> they didn't no no like go on go on Ioni I'm saying listen like I speak Italian I have no connection to Italy right I'm not saying people can't learn languages speak languages that's not what I'm saying here but what I'm saying is there needs to be some sort of respect on it. Like I learn Italian and when you learn a language or French or something, it's, it's you know, you learn the grammar, you understand a bit the culture and you have some respect for it, for being a language. Right. But I think what the part of the issue is, is that for, for, for lots of Jamaican people, they didn't maybe see value in Patois. Not all, not all, but when you come into a country that is so, horrifically racist you have to survive right you have to like you have to get a job survive and survival might mean trying to get on in this in this um country so maybe speaking patwa to your boss might not be the best way to get a job at that those times right so it was so not that didn't value it it maybe maybe um, no i think it's true i think i mean i was we mentioned um uh, professor caroline cooper who's doing a lot right. of research in this area and talks a lot about class and and the and the government's relationship to patois and how uh i don't know she, Car professor caroline cooper is just someone i think should is worth name checking and and, and, and it's worth someone, someone, someone who's worth name checking in this conversation and who mm -hmm. who people should look up if they're interested in the subject particularly in relation to like the jamaican government and how the jamaican government um approach patois and how you know some people from poorer um backgrounds can only speak patois and then they you know then and then maybe suffer because they can't speak um received english and how the jamaican government's um responding to that but then also as you say how the jamaican government initially didn't kind of respect the language and it's taken academics and not things just like jamaica that. i'm talking about here as well yeah I'm about right. as well for survival um yeah i'm, I'm talking i was making a link back to how cultural appropriation happened and maybe how we didn't value it or so i was like so, so that's that, that's a that's the issue in jamaica for sure i'm not, I'm not denying that um I'm, I'm saying um what was i saying again um what i would like to see what i'm thinking ourselves. go on talk about valuing ourselves uh, I think I think it's important to understand that you know Jamaicans we're magnificent and everything but we are a, a damaged um I don't want to say damaged race of people damaged but we've been through so much trauma so much trauma that to value ourselves it's just it has been really hard and people have put a lot of effort into you know that until to the point where you know yeah people are just really really proud but there's still some issues you know you can be like somebody can be privileged and oppressed there's like a contradiction so you can not value yourself as a black person quite so much but re really love the way that you speak, love all the style, love all the, the password and everything. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I'm thinking about is back to the Jamie Oliver thing. What I would yeah. love to see is, is Levi Roots bring out a carbonara sauce, you know, uh, <laughs> reggae, reggae sauce. That's, that's kind of like what you're saying, right? I don't think, I don't think it's tip for tat. Um, I think we could just continue. No, it's not tip for tat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it should be tit for tat. For it to be... Go on. We can continue being ourselves and creative, being the creative beings that we are. I don't think we have to be running around after Jamie Oliver, but what I do think is we need, what we need to value our culture and value our... Oh, have we lost Cedar? I don't know. I'll continue. Value our language. Like you were saying, you couldn't find anyone to speak patter with. It's like, maybe we need to value it in home first. Like, Instead of mm. like um, telling the kids don't speak Patwa, maybe explain to them what the language, how the language was derived. So it's it, we're starting from pride from in, within the home, and a lot. Of, it, it's well in Nottingham and around England. There's quite so lots of mixed race families um, who and mixed race people maybe um, haven't got connections to the Jamaican side. Um, they do, but it's kind of like. 
I think if we're talking about pride and people respecting Jamaican culture out there in the world, we have to do it first. We have to um, really Definitely. understand our culture and where it comes from. And language is a big part of culture. Um, um, yeah. I think, I think what used to help back in the day is like places like Acne Center in Nottingham and like African Caribbean community centers. We don't really have a culture of that anymore. The funding, I suppose the funding kind of disappeared for that sort of thing gradually through time. But um, yeah, being proud of yourself, it's, it's brilliant. But the, the person in the household has to know about it themselves. And we're exactly quite far removed from Jamaica now. We're on third and fourth generation. It was unusual for me to have Jamaican parents as a kid um, uh, that were like born there and came here as fully formed adults. It's unusual for someone my age to have that. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's unusual for someone in my okay. generation to speak Patois, you know, um, because um, people, my generation, oh, I the generation before, um, after me, um, but a lot of. You know, I, I've actually been in, convers- in professional settings with other Jamaican people and I say the odd pastel word. And sometimes it's like, oh, kind of like <laughs> taken aback. Like, is it not, I'll say frowned on, kind of a little bit like, oh, we're being professional now. So it's we like, can't speak that language. But it's kind of like, even the way we look at, sorry. Is it, I think it's a load. The to code switch. Yes, the code the code switching of, the, of it. Um, um I, can't I think yeah no I, okay just uh, just to um bring it back in just just to follow up on what I was saying though um with uh with Levi Roots and just to bring it back to the sound system as well because I think he's he's kind of interesting because um you know he's kind of he's kind of famous for his for making the like Jamaican sources but he's actually comes from uh, sound system culture I think he was in Coxon sound system so oh. you know he's had to, he, he's actually like an, a really authentic person from sound system culture that's that's ended up doing this kind of food stuff but you know you know he's 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 uh yeah he's he, he's actually really embedded in in the original kind of 70s sound system culture as well so you know there's probably a bit of a difference there between him and other other people i don't know so i just wanted to uh asterisk that i suppose so okay. <laughs> where okay I mean, I'm actually in my office at the minute, and there's someone hoovering behind me, unfortunately. But uh, oh no! no. Okay. Yeah, it's nice. all right. I... We had chat. That's yeah. all right. I'll maybe tell them to stop in a bit. So where else? Where 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 where? Actually, one of the things, honey, you wanted to talk about was the masculine masculinization of patois. Could you talk a little bit about yeah. that? You can say it. Yeah. If I, think I can say it, yeah. Masculization. <laughs> yeah. It it names so. Yes. Mm-hmm. Masculinization. Yeah, I think what's happened with Patwa is that it's gotten so popular in it, like popular culture for the wider audience. And it's become associated with roadmen and um, the idea of yardy. Like the, the word yardy is, is quite interesting. It used to mean somebody from Yard, Jamaica. But the, the papers here turned it into being a gangster. So we didn't really have control over our own identity, but um, yeah. So being from Yard has become like a cool thing for a black guy to to be. Like being being Jamaican in any way means that you're as black as black can be, and it'd be like a tool that people could use. I remember at school in the nineties, dating myself. Uh, <laughs> They, it would be used by, like, you, you, you'd you see mixed race guys, like, using it to try and make themselves appear more black. Um, which is I suppose problem. trying to connect to the part of them that maybe they didn't have, maybe they didn't have access to that at home. Exactly. Or... A, lot, a lot of mixed race people don't have um, their fathers in their lives, and they're normally black. That's normally the black input that they would have had in their lives uh that's that st- statistic is still true but um yeah so there's an overcompensation and like what go on and like just just like injecting it into every single sentence that they possibly could but then their mum's called 
stay fair. I don't know. It's, it was just very, and they wouldn't have any access to <laughs> Jamaicanness other than music. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I think um, back a yard again is a kind of interesting interesting phrase. Back a yard. Exactly. It's a song. Back a yard. Yeah. Backyard. And again, again, also yeah. um, in terms of like yardy and gangster, it's like the term rude boy. Everyone knows. Everyone knows the term rude boy. But I guess yeah. rude boy and, is and also is, another. It's is another kind of rude. Rude boys with a kind of, you know, bad, but kind of has a criminal aspect to it, right? And here we go. And here, and here's and here's some of the the issues. Like because of um, the racist negative connotations that um, um, have been placed on black people, Jamaican people. So anything Jamaican is seen as you know something okay. bad. Like um, even because my mom was born here, but she speak pastel girl. Look, and people say, "Are oh, you speak buddy? You speak bad?" And it's just like. Oh, how do you speak that, you know, kind of feral language? Like anything Jamaican on the wider um, European Eurocentric lens is cool, but kind of edgy, bad, right? And mm. I mean, we ha we've had to be fierce. We've, we've, that, we, we've had to be to, to survive. Well, that's a part of who we are, but we're not all, you know. So, so this is probably why a lot of Jamaicans people who are trying to raise their kids, um, try to distance themselves from the, the yardy, the badness of Jamaica and just try and speak English and to appear less threatening, you know, conservative respectability politics, going back to that, what Connie was saying earlier. Um, so this is what I'm going back to as saying is like, but, um, so yeah, we, we, need to, we need to value ourselves, but also people, you know, yeah, for me, I don't know. I think I think I take a slightly different perspective. Like, I don't, I, you know, I think "rude boy" is it was it was coined in Jamaica, so I don't see it as a yeah a, as as a racist. I don't see there's a racist aspect to it. I think it was no, it's no, a Jamaica. It's a it's a term that was that was that was that's, coined that's coined I'm in saying. Jamaica. I'm not it's a racist thing. What I'm saying is, "rude boy." Yeah, "rude boy" is definitely Jamaica thing from Jamaica. But I'm saying, I'm um, going back to what Honey was saying about the newspapers and and headlines were saying. Once it goes, once we leave our mouth and other people are saying it, like if I, if you're, if you're in a club and ask a Jamaican person, they automatically think, oh, they're bad. Like, oh, they're, you know, I don't want to fight them because they're Jamaican. They're a bit bad, you know? Um, so it has, it has negative connotations. Um, being Jamaican has negative connotations of, of um, ghetto-ness, of, as well as being cool, but these are things um, definitely has, and I, Sure and, and, sure. and that is because we don't really have control over how we are portrayed in wider culture. Um, we, Jamaica became known as being bad, like, um, oh, bad man come from Jamaica, you get me, all that stuff. Um, yeah, it became do, known, it well. known as that from since slavery. Yeah. Um, yeah. The rebellious slaves that would try and escape would be sold on to Jamaica. So you had a whole load of people that were just like having uprisings every 10 years <clears throat> in Jamaica. But to a, a British white person, um, they would perceive that as being pro highly problematic, actually. Yeah. And I'm we're like, bop, 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 bop. Go ahead, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. So it, so that is the kind reputation rolls on through time till we get to present times uh till we got to the 90s uh with the whole yardy thing like them mm. misappropriating the word and then come fast forwarding to now um it's road it's road man you get me yeah. that's how I talk. So, i'm a bad real. man so for, for <laughs> us like a rude boy is like yes man rebellion we, we are rebellious spirit that's what got us through but it's like when that leaves there's other cultures not necessarily seen as a positive thing you know um no. and it's seen as male so yeah. when when women speak patwa it's kind of seen as yeah you're a bit of a man you're masculine and that's because blackness is associated with masculinity um so the blacker you are the more manly you are so it's really problematic um the more closer in proximity 
proximity to Jamaican working classness you are you are associated with, if you get what I mean. That's, that's particularly bad English. <laughs> oh yeah, but, yeah. Not really. Not really. Joke it, joke it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, anyone talking? No, I'm sorry. Did I, I, look look I thought it was Stephen. Well, go on, go on. <laughs> so, um, so, Stephen, what, what are you saying? What, what's next? How are we doing? How are we doing time-wise? I think we're actually um, maybe there's questions fa or something. Fairly you near. To, I think we're fairly near to our have to go to time. Oh. Yeah. I wonder if anyone has anything. Yeah, it'd be good to know if there's any the questions audience. in the chat or anything. Alex, you gonna patch me into the. All right, it's Tom can coming you, back. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. I okay, so we've had um, uh, we've had a few um questions come in. So um, just also wanted to say that there was a loss of sound at the start. So apologies to those who um who've been watching and and just sort of missed uh, the first thirty seconds. I think it was. So um, who knows what the subtitles were saying that I was saying, but um, I'm sure it was fine. Um, but yeah, one question was, um, where does uh, Patois get recorded? Um, and, and is this done formally or is it something that is that relies on being transferred between people? Um, or is it perhaps captured in in records? Um, or is it something that evades evades this? It kind of evades being recorded. So, is that who's um, that? Just anyone? Yeah, who's, who's, who's it? Is it? Oh, that's that, it's um, that's just uh, a collective question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I, I think, like we were saying, I think Miss Lou is a really good place to start with that. Louise Bennett, uh, the Jamaican poet, and then and then and then um, yeah, I, I would probably um, point people towards um. Professor Caroline Cooper as well that's done loads of research into the early writings in Patois from the uh, probably like 19th century onwards maybe a bit earlier so there are really there are there are some examples of, of it being recorded in those terms and then and then yeah obviously it's a it's an oral tradition as well so it's you know it's just it's you know it, it's there in the music it's there in the uh, in, in spoken language but there's also a you know a you could probably chart a timeline of, of, of let's say, liter literature where um, it's recorded. And, and actually, when I was doing the research into the Dub London exhibition, I was looking a lot at literature as well. And like, yeah, for, uh, books from the 1950s of of, um, of migration into the UK. And, and that was often English authors that were just um, making note of, of, of the language as well. So it was it was being recorded by other people. So that's why I think Miss mm. Lou is so important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's funny you say that because um, I speak some patois, but it's like to see it written down is really like I'm like oh hang on a minute it's, it's really I really love seeing it down. So see when you did, when you did your translation of your office poems, this is amazing. I think we need to have it more patois written down. Um, this is how it's going to be recorded and to to last, especially in England where um, they're not letting any more people like Jamaican people into the country. <laughs> They're getting rid of us so things like this is, is amazing for it to um translations into patois because that again mm -hmm. it, it um fortifies that it's a it's, it's a language that needs to be respected and it has its own um set way of doing things um but yeah written, written i very really write in patois um but sometimes i want to say something i'm like oh how would i spell that um that was actually what was that was one of the things that was really interesting in doing the the office poems um publication and then and working with 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 uh with Joan Hutchinson the poet because she's you know she's really an academic that's researching patois and 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 taking it very seriously from a mm. from a Ooh. kind of literary literary perspective and a and an academic perspective but you know in a kind of linguistic way in terms of you know all the linguistic ways you might think about language so you mm. know some of the trans it was it was really really a, a great process to translate some of these very you know very what, typically english or non let's say non typical patois words words from the office space mm. you know words words about the mundane aspect of doing a photocopier or making yeah. a pie chart oh, wagga wagga email them <laughs> yeah <laughs> mate yeah wagga wagga email. i love that poem listen poem go and re read it out if you like 
yeah, I will try. But you Go know, on. reading patois is really it, it, like, oh. Um, You're reading really, phonetically, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, let me try it. Um, people that come from me, right? That come from me, people. May I try? May I try a thing, right? Karot with your wagga wagga email them. Just because you, you send one wagga wagga email, nothing say me I go read it. If me get if me get five wagga wagga email in a one day, and when me supposed to do me work, eh? you are digging on me space with your nega nega chatting them. Keep your email them to two sentence, no more. That way somebody I go read them. Anything longer than that, I go sh get shut down. And you know what? Nobody a blows on skirt. Yeah. Because your four page long email no make no sense. And it no have no use. If you think it's important, take up the phone now. What happened to you? But, um, <laughs> I was sorry. I tried. I tried. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I like it. I like is, hearing I other people read the poems. Up. Sorry, say that again. I said I like hearing other people read the poems. I think it's lovely. It's lovely. But I, I I'll say this as well. Like obviously, growing up, um, as as it, when I was growing up and hearing um, my grandma's parents speak patois, for me and my brother, it was like a big people's language. It was a, it was unusual to hear children speak patois. So when I went to in Jamaica to live there and I heard children speak patois, it was like Obviously, I, I knew that they spoke Patois, but because in England, we're associated with our elders. Um, and usually, in my family anyway, or when we were, when mum or dad slipped out in Patois in, out the road, out of our house, it was used as like an exclamation, like, oh yeah, I said, oh, eh, eh, look here, look here. So it was little, these phrases that were like height, heightened um, emotion. So, um, but I, I do think Patois is such a rich, colourful, heightened, expressive language. So when you when I read that same poem in English, it's not as dramatic. But Jamaican just sounds it just sounds so full and it just sounds so um it just sounds amazing. I love it. Me so, too. Have we got another question? Yeah. Um I'll yeah I'll just I'll jump the question three actually just because it follows on from office poems so um thanks Ioni for bringing up Cedar's publication because that that is something that we've we've published um on the occasion of of Cedar's exhibition in the gallery um and that's available from um from uh all good galleries including Bonington Gallery and also <laughs> a, an online link that I think we'll post in the chat as well so um um yeah do do get a copy um but yeah coming back to I think it's it's sort of going a bit further on from the translation process of of office poems um and this idea that um how much of the uh, discussion with between yourself and Joan Cedar was a um was trying to find a uh, sort of compromise or 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 sort of discussion or how much were you having to kind of almost meet in the middle because often when you would translate something from one language to another it's quite objective and it's quite determined as in what word might go to what but how much of that process um was actually a, a sort of debate between the two of you um i i pretty much let joan um uh do what she wanted to but there were what was interesting was um there were some words that um didn't seem to translate into pato which we which we, which she struggled with there's one poem called gimp work <laughs> um about uh, in, in, in english in english it's called gimp work gimp, gimp work about a uh, gimp in the office and they're just she just didn't have a, a patois word for gimp <laughs> so that was a good one i think she you, I, you can read that one out if you like as well i don't know yeah there isn't a patois word for gimp gimp and here they call it buff and walk <laughs> Yeah, so there, so there was a few examples of that. There was a few of oh, the lights keep going on off here as well. So there's a few uh, <laughs> in the office. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh well. Um, I'll just have to sit in the dark. The um, yeah. So there was. So it wasn't so much uh, a debate about what. It was more about occasionally that, uh, there weren't words that um had necessarily that necessarily were were translated into patois because I think the subject matter that I was using about the office environment is is felt quite alien to the patois and I think that's something that's interesting about bringing the things together which I was I was maybe um was nervous about oh, getting mm. the feedback as well 
All right. So maybe hopefully that answers that. Mm. That's great. It's great that you're. Um, did you write the poems in the very place that you're sat? <laughs> Absolutely not. No. no. <laughs> but it is. Yeah. I thought it would be funny just sit in an office whilst talking about the office poems. But no, no. The, the office poems were written in a different office. Don't lose a job, see Don't lose a job. <laughs> <laughs> my uh my team that i work with have seen some of the poems and they're like ah. and i'm like they were written before i worked here <laughs> I lie, you must tell. um honey i think you you may need to uh to leave us because you're off to yeah. to sing tonight aren't you i've got to go and do a gig i'm literally at the venue now they've kind okay. let me have this space to myself cool. have no, we got any cool. final questions um okay I've there got... was oh it's honey going yeah, honey's honey's gonna leave us. Yeah. All right. So, um, okay, thank you, honey. Thanks. I put some songs. I, I've given Great. you some songs. Cool. Uh, yeah. Anyway, see you. All right. Bye. Thanks, son. Bye. Thanks, Bye. honey. I, I like this because I've had to um I had to ring security tonight at my work and say please don't uh, lock up the building with me inside it tonight because I'm doing an event <laughs> and then see that you've had a you've had the lights go off and you've had the, ho the Hoover going yeah, around. Yeah, the cleaners are in Hoovering. Yeah. So um, I think we'll I think we'll probably um we'll wrap up quite soon. But yeah. um, um, <laughs> just, just, sending a message. Just, just one uh, just one one yeah. final thing that's uh, coming. I'm sort of I'm slightly expanding around the, the questions a little bit. Um, but um, it, does patois intentionally change form to somehow keep it as a language of resistance, something that evades wider understanding? So yeah, is it something that adapts and almost becomes in it splits off into separate sort of dialects in some ways? I think languages as a whole, um, like language as a whole, is is it ever evolving, beautiful creatures? Yeah, they they evolve. Um, I look at the English language; the new words are added to the dictionary, mm -hmm. um, taken out, added. You know, some words become obsolete. Um, okay, um, with some use, some words are um, introduced. So I think, in the same vein, there are new words evolving each time. Um, and obviously, because I'm in England, we haven't got, you know, the, the source. We need to go to Jamaica to, to actually... Yeah. But, but actually, though, honey, uh, honey, I, honey's got, I, I, I only, so when we, when we spoke at the opening, sorry, when we spoke at the opening, um, we, you actually said that, you know, I think one thing about Patois is if, if you don't want it to be understood by someone, it can be, it can be made to be impossible to be understood, right? Yeah, I mean, it, when I went to certain like parts in Jamaica, like deep country, and even though I can understand Patois and I can, I can get by, like people will understand what, they'll know I'm English, but I can get by. Um, sometimes I'll be like, where, where's she asking? Like, no, no, where's she at? Well, like, I could not understand what you're saying because of different dialects, like any of languages, dialects and things. So I think um, it depends on the different parish, if you are in Jamaica. Um, St. Thomas sounds different from um, the people in a Kong Pong, the Maroon Town, to sound different from people in Montego Bay, right? So, um, is Jamaican always a language of resistance? Um, I don't know. For, for me, it always will have that spirit in it. It was, we are, it's Jamaican. <laughs> and our spirit is to resist and to create and to and want to pride. So for me, yes. Other people might think differently. I'm one person. So no, I agree. I think so. I think it, it's definitely a, yeah. It can be a language that it can be accessible and it can you know like we've been saying it can it can enter the mainstream, but it can also it can be deliberately un uh, un un uh, intelligible, let's say, or un un understandable for outsiders. Right. I think that's a pretty good um, sort of place to, to to sort of stop and and, and wrap up um, this evening. So um, yeah, I just want to uh, say a, a massive thanks um, to to you, Cedar, to you, Ione, and and Honey, who's um, already left us, um, and for Alex, who's behind the scenes and is making sure this Thank is you, all um, this is all going out. Thank um, you, Alex tonight so uh, thank you Tom. <laughs> good to give a credit um and just yeah this has been uh, very much on the occasion of of cedar's solo exhibition uh patois banton uh currently in in bonnington gallery and uh until march the 11th so um i encourage you uh please to come and see the exhibition it's um 
it's uh, fantastic, uh, highly recommended, I mean, yes. and a really um, and, pick up, and pick up the copy of this. Do pick it. up the publication, it and it's a it's a really it. it's a really great opportunity to see uh, so much of Cedar's work in one place in one room, and I think that's mm -hmm. uh, that's a great thing. And there's new pieces in there as well. So um, please come and um, yeah, and just to say um, yeah, a final final thanks to to you both um, for tonight. So thank you very right. much. Thank you for having us. And thanks all everyone right. for tuning in tonight. <laughs> okay, bye for all now.